Hello, hello, hello. We're back on the Founder Hour podcast. This is your co-host, Posh. I'm Pat. And we are back with a guest you guys have already heard on episode 31, which is crazy. Christopher Gavigan, welcome back to the show. Thank you, guys. It's Can great you, to have you back. I'm, I'm back for part two. Back part for part two. I like you so much that I'm here. Yeah. For... <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we have part three, part four. You know, yes, who, who knows what happens down the line. More guys, you got to stop starting new companies, yeah. man. No, More companies, good. companies growing. It's addictive. <laughs> so it'll be good. So, Christopher, before we jump into it, explain to us what Pat and I are drinking right now. So, I put first I put water in front of them. Yeah. Mm. And nice, Just plain small, old H2O. Exactly. Small mason jars of water. But then mm. I said, no, I, actually, I'm going to put together a project that we're working on here at Prima that is a hemp cannabinoid instant botanical elixir, we call them, botanical elixir. So, that these are really functional good. plant uh, blends that are specifically geared towards bringing you calm, focus, energy sleep in some instances not this one this is not going to put you to sleep okay good but this is going to give you just a a, a a new renewed sense of self and calm and focus and uh called the go-to we're going to be launching this soon i won't tell anyone when but why very are soon. the names so complicated in this Na- space the names are There's really like seventeen thousand. like it's like and all the time you get to it, you're just like, what, what is it? Yeah, what is it? What are we talking about? Yeah. And w- yeah, yeah, yeah. W- w- at the molecule cellular level, yeah. what are we talking yeah. about? Yes. Yeah. I, it's like back when like they used to call like hands phalanges and all those things. Like, you know, it's like people eventually will start yeah, putting I mean, their names to it. I still call it that. Why do you keep like, moving your phalanges like, CBD like that? CBD wasn't even a thing until like <laughs> a couple years ago. It's now the most popular yeah. acronym in health and yeah. beauty yeah. and mm-hmm. all of healthcare mm-hmm. and wellness right now. Totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Totally. It's a pretty big, it's a pretty big, exciting category. So you've obviously been uh, up to a lot since the last time we spoke. Yes. Uh, but before we get into everything you've been up to, kind of tell us about like what your role is at Honest. Like, have you, are you completely kind of moved on to this new project or I know you're still a co-founder. You always will be, but. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Honest is, uh, Honest is forever in my heart and in yeah. my day to day, both brain and some of the execution activities that I do day to day. Um, but as every founder comes to a point with their organization, you empower certain edu- executive groups, mm-hmm. you empower your, your, certainly your people, but ultimately you, t- you take a, a good hard look at your life cycle and that brand and what are you doing and what are you most um, best equipped to be doing? And then how do you, oh, you're in service of your brand, but you're in service of your customer. And I kept going back to, I want to be in service of my customer and mm. customer and the customer moms, new families, new homes, new um, new babies every single day, and helping them on those strategic big uh, decisions on product, on big strategic initiatives at the board and executive level. Those were things that I was doing, and I wasn't running day-to-day business. And so I decided that um, – with the executive team that it was best to let's create let's create the package and the relationship and the connection that I best can both serve you as this chief ambassador, chief purpose officer, but also, hey, I want to go out and build and create and design and develop new projects and new things. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, extremely supportive on both sides. I, I, I'm very, very much involved in some of the cultural initiatives there, on the purpose initiatives, on some of the philanthropy and social impact initiatives, but I'm not – their day to day running business, which is great. Yeah. Also sad because I love like, that team. It's like a baby, I'm sure. Oh my like, god, you like, built this thing. Yeah, it's like go along, go, sure go to school, <laughs> go to grade school. I mean, honest is almost eight years old. Yeah. Right. So is second grade. Second grade. Right. <laughs> so moving along, Dad, leave me alone. And I'm these fine. Days, second graders are like basically what maybe we were as like seventh graders. Totally. Yeah. So they're not yeah. crying at school anymore. They're no. they're mingling no. with totally other kids. Totally equipped. Yeah. Very yeah. capable. And honest has has hit a really nice stride. Um, opening up some big uh, initiatives in the international space, new uh, categories and new uh, brand initiatives and product initiatives. So all really good. So mm-hmm. awesome. But I love, I mean, look, and every founder can uh, attest to this. Some of the early days, early development, early moments and early decisions, those are intoxicating. Yeah. yeah. And in order to, every single day, the decision is to make a decision mm. and making those early decisions that are going to set you off on your trajectory and your overall all, all path are really something that I love to do. Mm-hmm. And so I said, hey, I'm going to go out and develop something. And I've been thinking about this cannabinoid, how do we get people to address certain um, social epidemics of today, which are mm-hmm. stress and anxiety right. and digital addiction, what is things that are really impacting us. I'm seeing it impact mm-hmm. me, my kids, my family, those I love. 
So I want to address those, and I also want to address these innovations in the world of, mm-hmm. of health and well. Right. Uh, it's not health and wellness anymore. It's really health and well being. Right. How do you, how do I be spectrum. well? How do I choose what's going to be mm-hmm. better for me? Yeah. And I think that we're at a, such a unique time in the in the collision of healthcare and wellness that we get as brand innovators, we get to choose and build some really special things. And was it like a like a chicken and egg issue, like as far as like coming up with the idea for Prima, which we'll get into yeah. kind of more about what you guys are doing, but um, did the kind of like need to want to kind of go back to that early stage and kind of build a new brand come first? Or was it like you saw this opportunity in the CBD space and it was kind of like the right time, right place? It's think. a great question. I would say, so I've, I've learned about cannabinoids at Mount Sinai in 2009. Mm-hmm. And so I've been tracking this class of molecules and chemicals inside the body. Both we have them natively in our body. Right. So this is like and before even Honest Company began. Totally. Yes. This is when I was executive director of a nonprofit. Yeah. Um, because at, at, at that role, I was gathering data and out of research and science and medicine and, and academia and pulling that and pushing that to the public in popularized and easy, palatable ways. Mm-hmm. And um, I just thought it was so fascinating. Yet it was it was associated and connected to this world of cannabis, and cannabis yeah. still is regulated by the DEA, Schedule One, mm-hmm. the like highest and most um, yeah, along with cocaine and methamphetamine. No, cocaine that. is Schedule Two. By oh, the way. It's Schedule Two. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> so so even more dangerous, but oh, good. not okay, good, right. Yeah. Not a Crazy. single human being has ever died from a uh, marijuana over right. but, but they have from cannabis. cocaine, but that's a different story. In fact, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. can go down there. Yeah. But in the world of uh, of this th- of these cannabinoids and this this class of chemicals and this class of um, ingredients, I was fascinated by the fact that we could unlock and and really serve this new body system. So we've got this body system inside of us, everyone does, called the endocannabinoid system. Mm-hmm. If you were to Google it, you would find nothing, hardly anything about it within like normal search engine. Hmm. You've got to go to a next level, and the endocannabinoid system is this huge cellular receptor network inside of our bodies that is, its sole function is to modulate stress Hmm. and how our bodies come back into quote-unquote homeostasis or balance. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And so we're constantly in a state of fight or flight, of right. sympathetic or parasympathetic stress in our bodies. And so this system is to help modulate and reduce the, the stress and those that hormone balance in our bodies and also to help modulate other central nervous f- functions, brain functions, uh, hormone and endocrine functions, all these functions inside of our body that are are meant to be interconnected and somewhat um, linked up. And this system links that and, up. And is this a new discovery or why is it so, like on deep in exactly. the Exactly. This is the, yeah, this is this is a discovery that happened in the early nineties in Israel. Okay. That um, by this uh, Dr. Raphael Mashulam. Um, but yet no one really talked about it for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Yet in two thousand three the United States government took out a patent on cannabinoids for <laughs> neuroprotectants and antioxidants. Wow. So we've known about cannabinoids. We've known about endocannabinoid um, research for a long time, last 25 years. But the way it's been penetrating and coming into the public knowledge has been not through traditional Are there groups medical that have been or healthcare s- s- segments. Are there groups that, I mean, forgive my ignorance, I don't know much about this like politically, but are there groups that have been like suppressing it and all that stuff? or Actively suppressing it, I would not be able to speak to that. Yeah. Um, accurately, I would say it, it, it's it's been cloaked under the veil of social and political stigma for a long, long right. time, right? right? And so anything to do with cannabis, oh, that's illicit and or illegal and or you can go to jail for it. Mm. Now we are seeing states, over 30 plus states now, either medical or recreation for adult use, legalizing the use of marijuana. But here's the thing about cannabis. Cannabis, the plant of cannabis is broken up into two species or families. You've got Marijuana, and you have hemp. Mm -hmm. So Prima and this new brand and the brand that I'm deciding to work with is under the world of hemp. Hemp is the sober botanical cousin of marijuana. So there's no THC. There's no psychoactivity. There's no intoxication. There's no record. And and hemp hemp products have been around for a long time. Yeah, I remember. Thousands of years, right? You could use them for clothing. You could use them for building materials. You could use them. Um, For many, many, I mean, Bugatti puts them in car doors because it's an industrial um, material. And insulation, um, but 
in the world of cannabinoids, cannabinoids in particular the world of hemp, that's the wellness side. There's yeah. the recreation side on the marijuana and then there's the wellness side under, under hemp. Mm -hmm. And so I get fascinated by what's the best way to extract and harness the molecule and what are the molecules doing and for what function in this and in, in the body specifically and mm -hmm. that's that's the area that's being unpacked and millions and millions of dollars are being put into um, research right now both in pharma both at, at the um, federal level and NIH as well as within big brands big brands are trying to figure out what is this class of, of molecules and how do we best serve it to the consumer um, in a way, in a fashion that is linking healthcare and wellness, because they do have high potentiality around therapeutic uh, value, yeah. and we are seeing them anecdotally really solve for a lot of people's needs in the sleep category, in the immunity category, in the pain modulation and pain perception category, um, in the stress and anxiety categories. People are having benefit from them, right. and so everyone's like, "Oh my god." Anecdotally, there's a buzz around it. The marketplace yeah. is trying to figure it out. Research is happening. So I think in the next one to five years, you're going to see a ton of excitement in the world of cannabinoid research coming to the marketplace and really trying to unpack and, and also tell this is what they do for this role, for this specific function, and how it hits the body in this specific way, which is exciting. And not to get too personal, but I remember last time we sat down, we were talking about how Honest started. And yeah. it was really when you started having, or you had children at that point, and yeah. you realized that there were no good products that you yeah. can you know, trust for them. Do you find that when Prima began, or when just this idea was even just like a seed in your brain, that there was a personal need for it? Or was yeah. it more so you wanted to make some sort of impact on, on society because you saw there was a greater need for it. I was a yes and. Uh, I I personally, look, building, being a father of four, yeah. building a company of, of 250 plus yeah. humans that you have in your inside your headquarters, yes, stress happens, right? But yeah. stress happens on the freeway, step yeah. up, stress happens in, yeah. it, every single day no matter where you mm -hmm. go, right? There's just levels. It's just levels, right? Mm -hmm. And so I... How I, I run a very, I'm very critical of myself. I put high expectations on myself. I put high, high expectations on others. And so that ratchets up my level of stress response. And 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 I actually give stress. I like push yeah. it on people. I feel like most stress comes from within us. Like right. we put that stress right. and, and, you, and you, put it, you put it on ourselves and you also could put it on your people. Right. And so I wanted to show up in the best way possible, both for, certainly for myself and Certainly, the ones I love, my family and my wife, my kids, and and yes, my employees as well. And so you get to a point, and you you hear about certain things that are watershed moments and light and light bulb moments. And I would say this was a trickle around um, the understanding that I was addressing in the Honest Company this idea that we are dealing with epidemics of our time how chemicals and toxicants and ingredients and chemicals of concerns were impacting our health. But stress is also impacting our health. It's really impacting the way we engage with with each other, the way we show up for ourselves, the way that we show up in um, in our bodies. Our, our brains and our bodies literally can be transformed by too much stress. Our bodies can no longer do the cellular repair, the de detoxification necessary. Brain plasticity is really inhibited and brain function is inhibited through too much stress. There's tons of data. If you haven't um, seen Sanjay Gupta's piece on um, HBO, it's it's a, a, a small stress documentary mm -hmm. that he did. It's an hour long. Um, and if you just put stress into Netflix, you'll find it. And it's a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. piece of um, work because it really goes through some of these, um, these populations of people that have high stress even in just in the animal kingdom, but people that have high stress and what that does physically to their bodies. And we're all experiencing it at one layer of another. And and look, it just even comes up of how you sleep. Your quality of sleep mm -hmm. is a direct impact of how much stress and how much everyday stress you're experiencing. And so for me, I was at Honest, loving what I'm doing, but if I could get people from the world of prevention and, 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 um, and purity and build something that was around prosper and getting people to thrive and getting people to really optimize their best self 
and come into this world of how do we bring humanity in, into a better state? If I wasn't in stress, if I wasn't in pain, if I wasn't in a time of 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 uh, discomfort, then what could happen? Mm-hmm. What could re- what can I do then? How could I really impact people? Yeah, like what's my potential? What's at my that point? full potential? And yeah. that was super exciting for me. Right. Um, not only deal with the day to day life of realities, but mm. what if I felt great? What could I do? Mm-hmm. And that for me was a huge unlock. Um, and and if you look at the world of cannabinoid, who you serving? You're selling serving vulnerable populations. Any any consumer brand is serving consumers who are vulnerable populations. Right. And no one was building a level of trust. No one was building a, a level of quality. No one was building a level of testing and validation. No one was building a level of purity in the ingredients. I was like, oh my god. No one is doing these baseline drumbeat functions that any good brand, consumer brand should be doing. Right. And no one's doing a level of truth telling. Who's telling the story? Who's educating? Who's empowering the But why do you consumer? think that is? Why do you think they were doing I think it's early that? days. Yeah, early. I think, I think, I think when there's this like days. early wave of like something's happening, yeah. people just get into it, but they're not necessarily the most experienced people. It's people who have maybe like time on their hands to even get into it in the first yeah. place. Yeah. Because there's, especially in this in this industry, it's so regulated where I'm sure people weren't yeah. willing to take that risk early on. But then, yeah. yeah, everything changes. Yeah, and there's no for me. There's no credibility in the space. I yeah. was looking yeah. for the brand leader. I was looking for the signs. I was looking for the format of the of great consumer experience, and there was nothing there for me. And I kept like, who wants to put an oil tincture in your mouth, mm-hmm. swish it around for sixty seconds, and say, "Oh my God, that's going to work for you"? That's a horrible consumer experience, and it's old technology. Putting oil in your mouth to get it yeah. sublingually to think, go. I remember that. I'm to, 20, 27 years old. I don't remember ever you, doing that. You, you don't. <laughs> and and yet the consumer marketplace and cannabinoids and CBD is asking you to do that on a daily, daily yeah. day basis. So that's not okay. So now let's kind of go back. So you just, at what point do you decide that you're going to take a step back from honest? And when I say step back, less the day to day step back. Yeah. And focus on now building a new brand because obviously you did that for eight years and from it, what it, I, it, 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 i'm still struggling with it yeah 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 because i i adore everything that i built at right. honest company yeah. and with the the partners and brand leaders and the employees there i think we have we have still so much runway and so much potential in that brand i'm so proud of it yeah. and just think about outside of the people we impacted i i i, I Every week I collide with either an, a current employee or an employee that was there in the past, and they say how transformative that brand has been for them. Mm-hmm. I still make my f- 15 calls uh, a month, and those are 15 ups, 15 downs, 15 just check-ins with new customers. I love connecting with the consumers um, at the brand. But it was for me, it was a the, the point that it happened was – I could I knew I can impact a brand new category of healthcare cuz that's really what this is. Cannabinoids is about yeah. healthcare. Yeah. And 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 do it with a level of stewardship and guardianship and credibility and thought and mindfulness around hey, what's best when it comes to testing and and when what's best when it comes to transparency and what's best for when it comes to the science. Who's doing that? Nobody. Mm-hmm. And now you've got You've got retailers bringing in and shoving on their shores and uh, store shelves, crossing their fingers. Consumers are buying it, but holy shit, I I really hope that safe product sitting on the store shelf. Yeah. And are those brand leaders that I would trust to know batching protocols and SOPs around purity and and really know the ins and outs of the operational intensity it takes to source and batch with a level of sophistication? Mm-hmm. The big question. We talk mark. about brand a lot, and and do you think? I mean, to that point, do you think that most consumers go to that, that those levels like that like those deep levels of understanding what what a product is or is it mostly like they see the brand and other people may have referred it like word of mouth and yeah. or they go on Amazon and they see what the highest you know rated thing is and they just buy it but uh, i i i believe no but for me i care about that that human and that customer that's going to do the triple click in mm. or that's going to turn the product around mm-hmm. and do the small label and small uh, reading on the back label panel to understand what's inside and what's not and what and what re- what the real real is. And that's a consumer I care about most because they're the most influential and 
they're the most they're driving this category and, they'll be categories evangelists categories, and they're going to be the evangelists and the and pat to place. your point i think more than just like what the consumers think i think that as and this is my personal opinion but i think as a business owner as somebody who's servicing customers you want to do right by them because if there's even one instance of you doing wrong and it's revealed through let's say a right. lawsuit right your entire your like entire you'll company, be the company is you'll be the company that wins yeah. out. The company destroyed noisy, your reputation, yeah. which is even bigger than your company is destroyed. So now you can't even build another company. Yeah. So it's almost like you're bl- I, I, for me. It's like I don't want to say you're blind to the what the customers think, but you should almost be to that point and be so concerned with their well being even more than they are with their own well being, especially with a product like I, this. I just had a conversation today with a massive retailer who. We were talking about quality standards, and 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 she was very candid in admitting they brought a lot of brands in quickly, and they were in a reconsideration moment because the more she's listening, the more she's reviewing, the more she knows what she doesn't know, mm-hmm. and looking at the mm-hmm. brand leaders and a- poking the and asking the questions and seeing them being unresponsive, mm-hmm. and I think she's thinking, oh God, yeah. I ultimately, as yeah. any brand is, you are in service of your customer, yeah. right, and so. Here at Prima, what's our 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 purpose and mission statement? To uplift science, nature, and health to serve humanity, right? And you are in service of them. And if you can't show up with all the answers, then you better not show up. Yeah, especially something like this where you can be held so liable for somebody's well-being, right? Like you're not selling like even if you're selling chicken nuggets, like you, you want it. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're selling something that is consumable and is not going to like kill them or hurt them yeah. or whatever it may be right so yeah. for you so i guess there's, there's such an opportunity to do it right and be industry defining right. and that's what i was super excited about just like honest was industry defining on what is clean what is safe what is pure what are ingredients that we will never batch with same thing with prima what, what how are we testing how are we showcasing potency what it where are we sourcing from what are these molecules and how are they really being brought to you in the formats that they're in and and why are we bringing you these formats i'm not just sprinkling cbd and macaroons and and right. sparkling yeah. water and hoping you're going to love it i'm bringing you meaningful functional plant botanicals that are therapeutically um, derived and, and and dosed so that you can get get your body in a better place. That's what I'm doing. Is that what people are doing though? Are they taking, let's say, like a lotion, putting some CBD in it and calling it CBD yeah. lotion? Yeah. Yeah. But I guess to Pat's point, like how does a brand like Prima that's a brand new company, how, a brand new brand, how does that now compete with those other I believe, thousands of people that are doing the same thing? I It's a long game. And I worry less about competing with the brands and – Watching and educating and uplifting the and, and and giving the consumer the best class of information. Like once they know, and once they know the truth and the 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 deeper, richer story, then I think that they're going to understand to say, okay, this is not. I just don't want it. I don't need it in in my my brownie bites mm-hmm. from the local food store. Yeah. I actually want it in a meaningful dose at this targeted location or yeah. this targeted time or this functional need, right? You're seeing the world of functional, quote unquote, functional medicine really take hold because people are like, oh God, I can actually be super targeted in th- this need state that I have with these specific ingredients or these specific formats that I know are going to solve for me- my need. You mentioned like in the next one to five years, there's going to be obviously a lot of uh, research and development in this space and a lot of yeah. information that's going to come out. Yeah. What do you think happens to all these brands in the next five years, like, is it going to be a situation where there's so much information out there um, that they're all able to sort of adjust their formulas and all that stuff to comply with whatever standard there is, and yeah. it's just going to be a, a, a brand game at that point, or is there more to it than that? I think that you're going to see some a lot of consolidation in the space, kind of big brands buying out, yep. the smaller brands. I stuff. think you will see brands that are are meaningfully focused on. Um, I'm, fo- I'm focusing – so if you look at the world of um, cannabis and look at the world of cannabinoids, mm-hmm. so th- of it, let's just talk about hemp. Mm-hmm. Hemp has 480 specific molecules or compounds inside. 120 of them are cannabinoids. One of them is at a very small dose of THC, so it's non-psychoactive though. One is CBD, 
and there's 118 others, right? So you're going to see some of these cannabinoids being pulled out for specific body functions. So a lot of research and data is showing that directionally CBN, another cannabinoid, is very good for sleep. So I think you're going to see a very, again, targeted functional medicine type of approach with these cannabinoids over time. So right now it's just high level cannabinoids and CBD is the big one because it's really therapeutically, but it's a catch all for a lot of these other cannabinoids. So it's only, I mean, as time goes on, obviously people become more educated about it. Yeah. People are just going to kind of delve deeper into it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Why the name Primo? A uh, great question. I love, um, it's, I, I, I was joking with, uh, there's two other co-founders here, Jessica and Laurel, and we were struggling for a long time because I was part of the small team with the other Jessica that I have, Jessica Alba and I naming the Honest Company. And I was looking and we were looking for a name that could really uphold. Um, but when you heard it, you believed in, you knew what it meant. And it's hard to find that word. And we searched and searched for a long time and we were leaning towards this word worthy for a little bit. Mm. And worthy meant so much for us because your body's worthy, your health is worthy. You, like you should believe in yourself. You, you're worthy of of a more healthful and balanced state. But um, it just didn't it didn't resonate with everyone. We did some small focus group and testing on it. And I'm assuming the Instagram name was taken too. Hey, that's true. <laughs> and uh, and we were on, we were we've been going around the country looking at hemp farms and fields and fi- trying to find our source of hemp. And um, we were in the in a hemp field, um, uh, and we were literally talking about words. And this word, prima, came up. And prima, in many other languages, it means positive things. It means first quality and excellence and primary and um, and 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 good in other languages: Swedish, German, French. So I love the directionality of that. I love that it's a word that sounds familiar. It's four letters. It, it rolls over your tongue. It mm-hmm. feels positive. It also feels somewhat feminine. But the the kicker was for me is prima means female cousin in Spanish, right. and it's the, there's primo and prima, right. mm-hmm. and hemp is the sober botanical female cousin of marijuana. Mm. And I was like. That is it. That nice. is, and it was. It was, and then we got the Instagram handle, and then we got the Twitter handle, and we have yeah. Prima.co is our URL. Right. How did you meet your co-founders? Jessica so Jessica, Jessica is a. Um, well, I'll tell Jessica's story first. Jessica, she and I had collided way back when, when I was an NGO and um, a healthcare leader in the space of um, healthy child, healthy world. She was uh a, initial founder of a nonprofit in the bay area called teens for turning green mm. and so she was in the clean beauty and a healthcare pioneer very early so well fellow wellness warrior and we collided at honest and she went back to harvard business school and got her mba and then she started this uh, local um brand here called cannabis feminists and this was a brand that brought women together to talk about um cannabis specifically to how do we engage women to help drive the world of, of female entrepreneurship in the world of femi- uh, uh, cannabis because cannabis has the first is the first industry that it could possibly be um, run by female entrepreneurs and founders mm, and so she was really pushing for that as mm. well as really doing a lot of investigatory work with other brands and then laurel so she and i collided and then laurel laurel happened to be with me at um, the honest company for close to seven years she helped drive brand marketing um, operational pipelines product development she was my left and right arm there at honest and she is an all-star she's a also happens to be a, another um uh, Ivy League grad. She's a Princeton grad. I wish I went. I tried to get yeah, into Dartmouth. Yeah, I didn't yeah. get in. And uh, <laughs> like I got to get at least two Ivy Leaguers on exactly, my team. Exactly. I got to yeah. get Ivy Leaguers, yeah. Leaguers. And she is just a phenomenal asset in such a – her time was come. And she was also in this world as she has two kids, but she was also recognizing her stress and what that was and how that was transforming relationships yeah. in her life. And so she was did, uh, dabbling in, into And was it like a discussion well. between the three of you or how did it come about? You know, it, was, it was hard because at the time, Laurel was on maternity leave. So Jessica and I were building this brand and we had another brand title called Hempia. And we were working on this and we were colliding a lot of brand concepts. And then as soon as Laurel came back from maternity leave and she was like, wait. I went in, and so she she came in, and it was obviously a, a, a no brainer and a seamless um, integration for her and and us. And so we've we've been it, it, it 
in those early days of colliding with co-founders and really deciding who you want to sit against and across um, the table with is such a an important decision. I, oh, yeah. I mean, having been in a, a co-founder set of the coming back from the Honest Company and then choosing, having an opportunity to choose co-founders here, you really want to make sure that that is the best decision you're possibly making. Yeah. And so it was before it was great. we kind of go into it even deeper. I think, and not to undermine any previous questions and any yeah. four, like questions that are coming up. Of course, I think the most important question is, what is it with you and Jessica's? It's a problem. <laughs> I mean, why? Yes, Posh, first it's a problem. founder, second go founder. It's a problem. Yeah. I, I, I mean, so if anyone has, so please email I mean, me at Christopher. I have literally been waiting to ask you this. Yeah. The, se- the second time I was like, hey, wife, co-founder, co- co- that's fine. Uh, cute. But right. now when it's like, it's a habit second now. Co-founder. So seriously, anyone yeah. who's listening to this over time, email me a great psychic that you might know, yeah. Christopher at Prima.co. And email me of a psychic that you might find who could talk about past or life regressions or specific people that need to be dealt with. Yeah. Because clearly we it's need a to uncover some truth. No, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. So right? it's weird. I mean and I'm assuming you recognize that. Oh, absolutely. Do yeah. you like think th- do you like think twice now when you're like Fuck, there's going to be a fourth Jessica. Or, or, or when you come across another Jessica, like, I wonder you what like, role she's going to have in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to start a company with you. <laughs> so I don't when, care. It was funny because no when please. I was sitting down with this Jessica, Jessica Asoff, she was like, hey, and I can be your your newest co-founder, Jessica A. I was like, no, <laughs> but maybe. And I was oddly like excited but like really turned off by it. But the more and more we collided and worked on the concept, the more and more I was excited about it. Uh, working with maybe her. like so, in your subconscious job listing it says a, like yeah, must be named Jessica. so all a. jessica's in the world <laughs> yeah send me your cd yeah, i don't think there's any like anti-discriminatory like any yeah. like employer laws against like no no hiring no. per <laughs> name name yeah. exactly yeah i mean, I mean it's like ageism yeah. sexism and namism, namism? Yeah, yeah and that's not a thing yet not a thing yet um i know so i, I think offline where you mentioned it's been like nine months or so you've been kind of just like getting this thing off the ground yeah. and i know in this like nine months a lot has happened in this industry a lot of people have come into the space and just a lot of like noise yeah um has it been difficult kind of just standing back and kind of watching things play out before you launched like officially launched or yeah. did you kind of know like we yeah, were coming like, in hot i i knew we'd come in strong and hot and we're literally day five into our launch <laughs> yeah. we can talk about that yeah. in a second but um from where we erased our initial seed capital to which was in um mid to late summer and we closed the round in august we announced it in march when we um announced the brand platform and the educational um first website um, so those f- six to eight months was was difficult because you're observing new entrants, conversations happening, certainly a, a, the most ridiculous velocity I have ever seen in a category in the, in the course of my career. It's like simultaneous and, with the information that's coming out and exactly. the brands that are starting. Yeah, it's like happening and, at the and, same time. And, the, and I think that velocity and momentum, that has been trying, that, that commentary has been trying, triangulated and, and mentioned by countless other people. And both in healthcare and beauty and CPG, it's it's it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, and I only I only attribute it to that because people are actually getting benefit from it. Like, and and that that benefit and that that consumer need that's being satisfied at such a at such a pure and exciting time and phase. I think people are. That's the only reason why people are getting involved. And yes, it's it's, it's an, an exciting time for all things um, healthcare, but I think it's a it's only in response to what the consumer is demanding. Hmm. But for me, it was it was it was hard, but I knew we were coming out with something that was truly visually so differentiated and special and elevated and sophisticated. Something I knew on the the science and formulation side, you can't rush rush good formulation science. Like you've got to do the testing, you've got to do the stability work, you've got to do the packaging compatibility testing, you've got to make sure that this thing is going to be a shelf stable, pure, safe, clean product. Again, it won't cast any shadows and shade. We've done that work, yeah. And I can assure you, and mm-hmm. I can show you the test reports. Anyone can email me anytime. I'll send you anything you want to see. Mm-hmm. We also have it up on our site. Like you should be demanding that from brands that you might have aligned with in the past. Um, or might be in your um, in your your medicine cabinets or sitting on your kitchen and shelves right now. So that's the work that is needed to be done. And I know that getting that work done up 
up front, it's that slow down to hurry up moment. And I know that we've got a, a really solid product in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of the branding, um, what has been different with Prima compared to like the branding process when you were launching Honest? Yeah. What has been the biggest difference? The biggest difference now is because Prima is it's harder to, to right now i didn't I, I knew we were building a brand that it could really span a large segment of the population from a demographics from an 18 year old to a 78 right. year old but you don't really know who your consumer is yet mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you believe you're addressing a, right. a population but i'm dealing with people who are in pain people who can't sleep well people who have stress like that's humanity and right? you launched like out the gate trying to cover all these right which is even right. tougher and so i i've launched with three products and yeah. i've got a, a host of others that are going to roll out over the course of the summer and so whereas honest you knew very like that's the new mom that you're addressing whereas prima you're addressing a very broad audience right. and so it needed to be masculine it needed to be feminine it needed to be trusted it needed to be breakthrough and beautiful and needed to be like transform it on the shelf yet it needed to be trusted and safe like all mm -hmm. those things are very hard to weave and I think we've gotten something really special because it needs to feel fresh and modern and new yeah. and innovative, yet it needs to be ex a, a nod in form and in function when it comes to packaging and brand that it, it needs to feel expected. Right. Like I, I can't pick it up and it can't be, oh God, like I've never seen that format before. I, I don't know whether to trust that or not because it's also in a category CBD, cannabis, marijuana, yeah. you don't want to even put instill even more doubt in the exactly. consumer. Exactly, it's yeah. hard. It's hard. So you know, a lot of when companies are starting up and whatever, you always hear about product market fit and like who's your target audience, all that stuff. Yeah, it seems as though right now you're in the product market fit stage of like trying to figure out what your product market fit is. Yeah. I mean, in the you know, you said you've been you launched five days ago. Has there been any indication so far of like what that market is? I mean, is it women aged eighteen to twenty one? Is it like men aged thirty five to forty? Is there any sort of indication of where the heaviest uh, demographic is right now? I would I would say that what we're observing early from both consumer insights work that we're doing, work that we're doing on. Um, the incessant polling that it, it comes from in segmentation and demographics work yeah. when you do on the marketing side and then uh, initial buyers it's it's leaning 28 to 45 slight female okay but the males are right there too i think you've got a segmentation of the audience that says i'm an athlete both male and female i need to recover i i have pain in my everyday life i also we've heard about like grandfathers in Arizona putting on his knee and really yeah. getting a lot of, of, of pain relief. And so we've, we've seen different segmentations of people. We've actually even seen parents reach out and can I use yeah. this for my teenager? And can I use this for, for, um, my, my father or mother? Or can I use it for me? And so you've got, you, I, so I, it's too early it's to too early tell, for sure. but I'm, I'm excited to say that we're hitting a segment of people that are body optimizers that care about their health that lean into new innovations and 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 natural solutions right. that that also believe that that the health is in their hands yeah. right and that they are getting to choose and they're getting to decide but i am kind of even though it's super early yeah. i am kind of surprised that those numbers are leaning towards the i don't want to call them older but the middle age side of yeah. things yeah. because a lot of the early adopters of technology or just new products seem to be yeah. the younger generation, like eighteen to twenty-five. Yes, and it's and I'm sure those folks. I feel are like going something to get about on. this space because it's in the health and you said well-being space. Yeah. is like those folks have been through so many different maybe like medical yeah. situations yes. where like they're so like just doubtful of like the medical industry and, and like exhausted exhausted of, like, of it. So there's like I want to carry it for myself, and yes. here's an here's an opportunity to do that. Yeah. Yes, but I also yeah. feel like there's so much like there's a lack of education for that population of folks because they right. automatically think CBD is marijuana. Yes, which is right. one thing I love about how you guys started, which was like all this time when you were developing the product, you started from an educational yeah. like perspective of like, I think you had like shop and learn. It was like two like yeah. tabs on the website. Yeah. And I, I, didn't, I hadn't seen that anywhere mm -hmm. else. So um, uh, other co-founder, Jessica, she, she's chief education officer and her role and function over the last nine months, whilst Laura and I built brand and product and packaging and all things 
um, operations, her job was to put out best in class content. Yep. So we have Which 65, hard. really hard. So hard, but also I feel like the only way now to reach people because you can't advertise no, digitally. No, exactly. <laughs> right? You can't go through Google and Facebook right no, now. You could do mm-hmm. billboards. <laughs> you could do billboards or, or, or radio or podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, so Jessica put out 65 pieces and rolling right now. We're going to put out anywhere between 20 and 30 pieces a month of original pieces of content. And these are stories. These are guides. These are of factoids, these are Q and A's, these are ask the doctor, these are things that these are real true assets that we launched and as you said, we launched um over sixteen weeks ago online mm-hmm. because we felt that it was in part of our nature and part of our um our duty and responsibility, not a responsibility, not over only our ambition, was to educate, was to inspire, was to really connect and contextualize what are these molecules and what is this category and how will it impact me? And you only could do that with a level of credibility and a level of of of, of real yeah. good education. And and people are selling, I mean, the, the world of claims in this category is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, people I'm are sure. saying, cured my cancer, cured my psoriasis. Like right. people are over their skis. Yeah. And it's irresponsible. Mm-hmm. It's factually inaccurate. And the FDA, I welcome the FDA to, to, to really go after brands and really police the marketplace mm-hmm. because there are people not doing their jobs. Right. The brands need to be responsible. And I, I have, to, to, to have to say that we are doing our best and continually working with the regulatory bodies and, and consultants on this because you have to be a responsible party and compliance and all things claims. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really do believe like the, the brand, the company that takes all this information and really, I don't want to say dumbs it down, but simplifies it yeah. for the end consumer yeah. in a really um, consumable way where it's like, th- this is everything we know about this. This is how it's going to benefit you oh. and just simplifies it. Yeah. With, with, with enough, with, like I don't want to use this silly term edutainment, but yeah. you've got to make it fun. interesting and fun. Yeah. And it's got to be palatable and bite-sized and, right. and digestible So, and popularized enough that they care to learn. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe, and I keep uh, telling this to the team, is I'm not playing to – like the whole thing is like, no, make it for a sixth grader le- reading level. And I don't believe that's true. Like people are smart. Yeah. Today's consumer is smart. Gen, uh, the millennials and Gen Zs are really Very smart. smart. Yeah. And they, well, are, they just have access to a lot more than totally. the previous generations And have. crazy cunning. And yeah. they are they are label readers. They will push it hard. I mean, I cannot wait for Gen Z to really make their impact on this marketplace mm-hmm. because there. I just saw a survey and it said of the top five things they cared about most, most performance was number five. Wow. They cared about sustainability. They cared about who's behind the brand right. and the intentionality. Yeah. They cared about the values and ethos and yeah. the, the brand positioning and the mission behind the brand. They cared about cared about purpose and social impact. Yeah. I mean And this is Gen Z, which is like ten years old right now. So <laughs> it's like I think the, the, the oldest one is, like, is it, eighteen. Or oh, is it eighteen? Okay. Yeah. My only Forgive concern me. about that though is that <laughs> you obviously want there to be performance. So, oh, and totally. I, so, yes, you know, yes, so, yes. And, and I don't think that Gen Z knows. Yet. I don't want to like they're, shit on the gener- generation. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I don't want to. You know, performance is going to matter at one point. Like, there's only one. At one point, I'm going to be like, Christopher's a great guy. I'm going to support his product. But if his product's shit, well, why am I going to keep buying well, it? Well, the the golden ticket in CPG is repeat. The yeah. only way to get repeat yeah. is through performance and exactly, exactly. Exactly. In any space, really, like totally. Even in service business, product needs like, to work. Exactly. Right. So before we move on to policy and a lot of the challenges that come with, you know, payment systems or just even oh God. federal government and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I know it's a whole it's a whole mess. What has been the biggest challenge for you going from a company like Honest and being a leader of a big company and almost scaling down and becoming a founder of a brand new startup? Yeah, I, uh, for me, I get most excited about the high low. So you're at the thirty thousand foot level, and then you're down to the tacticals and the two yeah. foot level, and that's exciting to me. I think that there is a um, there is a challenge every single day because you have such strong beliefs in wanting to make sure that you are getting all the small details right, and tinkering and and making those super small and yet critically important decisions early and yet you have to bring on team members early right Our, we're a small team of eight and you have to empower them quickly and they have to feel like they have a level of ownership and range and you brought them in for a reason so you got to make sure that you've empowered them correctly so i i want to always um not over it and not 
and, and empower them early and, and give them the range they need. So that's that's been my challenge because I this is like a baby, right? Like yeah. you want to yeah. make sure you can full control of everything. And, and going back to when you had that kind of realization that, hey, I, I, want, I need to do this. I want to get going. Yeah. Um, did you anticipate how difficult and challenging it would be? I didn't anticipate the difficult nature around the the core operational right. brand partners it would take. Banking, Big, large three PLs in fulfillment, mm -hmm. shipping, and and everyone's and getting, scared. Everyone's scared. <laughs> um, each, uh, pa uh, pro payment processing. Yeah. Um, get, making sure you have a, an appropriate warehouse where you can put this stuff and stage it. All these things, like bringing that the heavy lifting that we have so many first first ever's. And one of the first ever, first ever bank, first ever 3PL, first ever um, payment processing, first ever, like all these things we had to do because, they, and thank goodness, I the experience and the the, the level of uh, expertise and pedigree coming from Honest that says, okay, I know how to do this and this is these are why and what. And believe me, this is going in the right direction and showing that both the legal um, direction, doing the work at uh, both in Sacramento and D.C., working with those legislators to show that the directionality is happening in a positive way, um, knowing what's happening at FDA and USDA and all these federal uh, regulatory bodies and ensuring that this is going in the right direction and telling that story. And that takes a lot of time. Yeah. And I didn't realize the heavy lift it would take. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be much more turnkey. Yeah. Let's get the product right and let's turn to on the on Shopify and roll. Yeah. And no. Yeah. Could you have done or could you have started this or could you have had the confidence that you have now starting Prima had you not done Honest or had those previous experiences in the nonprofit world and in the wellness world? I don't I don't no, no way. There's no way I would have had the know-how. And this is how I, I, I take a step back and I take a deep breath and I watch some um, other brand entrants in the marketplace and I'm wondering how they're doing it mm -hmm. because the, the level of know-how and the level of institutional knowledge I've built out up over the years and the level of relationship, it's been hard for me and I'm wondering, God, how are, how are they doing it? And I... And then that that only leads me to believe, and I want to be positive, and I want to cheer for them, but it only leads me to believe that there's got to be something that I'm they're not fully taking into account. Yeah. Right. And that and then my biggest fear, and I I won't I, I don't want to realize it, but my biggest fear is that someone's going to get hurt, mm -hmm. and I I I want to make sure that all consumers are safe. Right. And because that, that would that would that also would, indirectly affect well directly affect you. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so we uh, and and I and I and I have welcomed and I a lot of the brand partners and the and the other um, uh, competitive brands out in the marketplace. We've talked and I and I commend a lot of them for doing the work and saying, "Hey, we need to slow down and get this right," because there are some people that are doing it right and are doing it in in a nice fashion. Um, but I just I I caution the whole industry to slow down and make sure that you have just your test your testing and your batching and your compliance stuff. Um, done at an appropriate level because that some of that stuff is so critically important yeah and and i know there are like brands launching pretty much every day yeah. like in this space um do you think i mean how much do you think the folks that got in it early let's say like in the last year or two yeah. uh that like uh, is there more of an opportunity for them to win out once these uh, once the industry consolidates and kind of like these pe folks have been building a brand yeah, i'm sure I, they'll they'll be rewarded for some first mover advantage yeah. stuff yeah, you think and, so? And, and but is it too late? My, my leading question was: Is it too late now for even new brands to come in at different kind of angles, different niches? I, I think I think what you're going to see is different formats, and you'll see some of the bigger, larger institutional players start sprinkling cannabinoids into yeah. their product line. Like or Gatorade we're, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh my God, we're going to create a new recovery drink right. with hemp cannabinoids, and they'll they'll start having small segmentations right. and smaller franchises against this larger category mm -hmm. um so how, then how do you see um like for example prima mm -hmm. like in that like if there's like other 
brands that are maybe multi-billion dollar brands in the space yeah. that are not, maybe not don't have CBD or any hemp yeah. in their products now. But once they do start adding it in, like, how does that work? Like, what do you hope to build that could give you that leverage and that kind of sustainability? I, I think that there is, I think that's, I think we're three to five years away from that. Yeah. Those larger, they're kind of just waiting, institutional waiting. brands, yeah. wait and see. A lot of the innovation that they build and develop is bought, right? They they seek yeah. Yeah. partners in the world and brands companies. in the world and they look or for like a private label or something. Or, or private label, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I believe that there is a, a very, very large set of consumers that once they really true see the true value and the therapeutic impact of these molecules, like even just the people that we've um, given our products to, they they... Um, the depth of affinity and loyalty and connection that they have is like I've never seen before. And I thought it was ex extremely powerful in the world of, oh my goodness, you prevented diaper rash on my baby and I'm only going to use your diapers now. But that's only for what, a 24 to 36 right. month window. But this is a lifetime of connection. This is a lifetime of belief. You You've helped me. You've solved for me. You're serving me. Right. That level of relationship is incredibly powerful and incredibly valuable. And and I'm betting on the the long tail of that relationship, both in business, but also in the world of, hey, what are we doing here? We're we're here to transform people's lives. Like, mm. yes, it's if it grows a nice business, great. If it grows a small business, great. But um, our job is to help get people to understand that these 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 compounds are here and they're really really p powerful and impactful mm -hmm. so now moving on to the challenges and the it's, policy it's hot here. Stuff. like uh, the air moved <laughs> the down. air the, the lights the we're, air, we're sitting the, in a dark room yeah, it's great in a dark room it's mellow it's, technology water is hitting me you nice guys right feel now. great <laughs> i feel great, great. i yeah. feel fantastic the, I've mood, feel the mood's good it's making me feel even better uh so definitely check it out at prima on instagram there you go um just got to throw in some like you know nicely done free advertising right there um so I know that everybody's trying to get into this space, but they don't recognize that there's so many challenges, obviously, to deal with mm -hmm. until they realize that there are challenges in this space. One of them being payment processing and the fact that, you know, it's still a schedule one drug. What have been the things that have come up for you guys that have been just like these forks in the road that have prevented you from moving at the pace that you want to move at? One of them is payment processing. Yeah. I think every band in the CBD space and the hemp space and just that little branch, but also in the in the traditional recreation and marijuana side, has has come up to this challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you have some of the large banks and institutions not willing to underwrite it. Elevon and U.S. Bank came in for a little bit and then subsequently moved out because you had brands, unfortunately, saying that they were CBD but selling THC. Yeah, and right. so they were mis or hemp saying exactly yeah, on Amazon and, exactly stuff, and right. they were and they were mis mislabeling and 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 misusing that which that is almost it's just like a federal crime but that's a whole different okay story. yes yeah um, <laughs> and so unfortunate and so again dings the whole industry mm -hmm. and so everyone's set back so everyone if you don't and and also if you don't have transaction history if you haven't transacted a sale a lot of banks won't. Say they they're gonna throw your hat in the ring. We've actually talked to some banks and some institutional partners that they looked at our website and were like, "Oh, we appreciate your educational approach. We appreciate you doing all this, but we don't want you to say any of that." And I was like, "Wait, I can't talk about the endocannabinoid system. I can't talk about cellular biology. I can't talk about cannabinoids. I can't talk about sleep claims." Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't talk about any okay. of it, and. I was like that. That is like there's there's a level of injustice there that really fired me up. Yeah, and so we clearly are not working with that payment solution, <laughs> but we're we're really in a, we're in a in a place right now that we're looking for the best payment providers and payment solutions in the marketplace. We, there's a couple that we have like I literally it's talk about Laurel stress and like, oh, she has cannabinoids. She is, <laughs> we have five different work streams going on and one is in Square, one's in Stripe, one's in oh, in, yeah. in a, a Bank of Albany, Bank of Fresno, Bank of H H HSBC, like all these different varietals going on and I have to say, they all need to be going on because you need these mids and you need these, these other processors in order to, um, 
effectively manage your pipeline. But mm-hmm. what's the deeper issue? Is it the fact that these banks are they almost just see taking a risk, high risk because yeah, it's they not... See it's high risk they see it as high risk. Yeah. Right? Because if you if you have a consumer that says, Oh, I didn't make that transaction or I didn't that that's that this is not my history. And if you have too many of these ones and uh, that are denying their payments and and or transaction history becomes a bit less more volatile, then they'll just drop out. Right. right. So the banks aren't willing to go there yet. Mm-hmm. And so until a big federal like FDA coming down and saying we're, this is how we're regulating hemp and cannabinoids under a nutritional supplementation monograph and 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 um, under that program and parameter, you've got a lot of banks just waiting to see. Which is going to be around the same time when these big brands start getting into the space too, exactly because right. now it's like safe to do that. Exactly right. And, and like most of these brands that have worked with these processors in the early days when they were allowing it, yep, um, had no like credit history or anything like that. So they probably realized like something must have happened where they're like, oh shit, like we can't do this exactly. anymore. Exactly, and it, yeah. it is. It comes back to credit history and transaction history and ability that you that if you you've got to be able to back up your history with some type of asset, mm-hmm. right? And it's either a personal guarantee or money in the bank, either one. Are you guys proactively advocating in the federal government to? get this as a non schedule one drug? Yeah, so so under so <clears throat> cannabis is still schedule one and marijuana is. Hemp is declassified under DA now. So it's under the Farm Bill of twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um it is no longer under to the DA jurisdiction, which is great. We are working with our, our legal team who is just standing in front of um FDA on May thirty first of a couple months or a couple weeks ago. That was actually last week. Mm-hmm. Um, standing in front of them and saying, "This is what and why and who the brands we're representing, and these are the things that we need to see." So, yes, we are. Do I feel like it's going to happen anytime soon? No. Probably not. They're in a listening period and they're right. in a watching period, and they're in a place where they're going to start doing more active policing and sending out both joint this letters. Is the DEA. And this is the FTC and FDA. What right? does FTC have to do with it? FTC is around claims. And Got substantiation, <clears throat> right? So FTC and FDA will work in joint con- injunction to make sure that they're policing against people that are are making false claims uh, on both on structure function claims mm-hmm. as well as um, monograph claims, and so they're going to start doing work against that, which I, I'm I welcome and they should, and I think for people like um, people like the the regulators right now i think everyone's waiting to see them take some actions and but here's the reality fda is understaffed mm. under under budgeted as is every government agency right and the, mm. and like do they and they're just slow as fuck let's just call it <laughs> fact <laughs> um but i but i i i i and then you've got states like states of like here in california california department of public health, they've made out a big blanket statement. Like, we don't know how to regulate it. We can't police against it. So you shouldn't be able to put it in drinks and foods and supplements. But people, brands are still doing it. I mean, none of these supplements are FDA approved anyways. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. News alert, everyone. (laughs) FDA does not approve supplements. I've been right? using them up for a long time for the gym, and no, they no. they don't, and they're sold in GNC and everywhere. Like, they don't approve supplements, right? So that and people don't understand that just because it's sitting on store Less shelves. <laughs> yeah. But then there's this whole like, what if something happens and you don't know someone, what they're putting into it? Someone, someone in like yeah. middle of Texas is coming up with a random formula, right? And packaging it and selling mm-hmm. it in GNC. Mm-hmm. Now everyone thinks it's okay. Yes. You know what's but, in it? But can you sell this product in stores now? I can sell it in like stores. In stores. Certain, yeah, so there have been um, retail environments. Uh, Kroger just opened up. Uh, CVS. Alberton, CVS, Walgreens. Some big major drug and grocery store channels are now selling it. You can sell it. There's some local boutiques selling it. Right. Um, uh, I don't – Whole Foods and Amazon has not have not opened up sales yet. I don't think so, yeah. But I think that the the reality of the sales channel – I think – Retailers are saying, okay, we're going to police it. We're going to do our best to um, vet and assure everything that's coming in is pure, safe, and clean. And then they're going to do their best to do that work. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, federal regulators, and there needs to be some type of guidance and principled decision-making in order to And and is that the ultimate goal for brands now, or at least speaking to your brand? Because obviously Shopify and like e-commerce is not the – is not happening the way it should be right yeah. now. So yeah, I mean, look, trying I, to get into stores exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll ha- we'll have a blended mix, both DTC as well as 
physical four walled environments yeah. and we'll open up our own four walled doors. I think people love the experience, experience of of understand being immersed in a brand. And I think we've got such a beautiful brand aesthetic that yeah. it really lends itself to it. And the product itself is experiential too. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> it's, it's what make it's what makes you get, feel something and yeah. also what you don't feel, right? right. All of a sudden you start feeling, oh my God, my neck's not hurting and my back's not hurting yeah. and I'm just feeling better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where can people buy the product like today? So like, right now, listening right now, what can they do? So they can go to prima.co. Um, oh, so this is, we're sitting in early June right now. Over the co uh, course of the next three months, you're going to see two more product drops. Okay. Um, so right now we're in this daily essentials um, segment where we're in the supplements, we're in the beauty care category and the body care category, but we're going to be lo- um, bringing out some more body skews yeah. around therapeutic, targeted therapeutic um, work. And then we're also bringing out these elixirs that you guys are drinking right now. Cool. And strategically, like, what? Why did you decide to launch with multiple products across different kind of um, formats, subcategories yeah. or formats yeah. um, rather than kind of just like trying to launch one and really? Uh, hone in I, on that? Because I believe there are different there are different times and moments that people um, need to be solved and 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 focused on. Mm-hmm. So people like different formats. Some people like. Things on the topical skin. Some people like can understand supplements and and vitamins and pills and putting them in their mouth. Some people don't like that at all. People people like drinks. So I think format is really important to to hit your broadest range. But early on, as I said, we are still in the mode of who's our customer and what do they want. So right now is a massive listening time. We've done everything in micro batches, so really doing small intentional batches, and we're watching and listening. And if customers say, we love this skew and we hate that one, like skew rationalization, kill it, Mm -hmm. and focus more on this format or that specific franchise. Um, I have have high hopes and high belief in that that powdered, instant powdered uh, mix. I think that's going to be a really interesting format. Coffee, tea, juice, smoothie, yogurt, put it in anything. I think people are really going like to love protein that. protein powder. Exactly, yeah. like protein or collagen and, and, and tasteless, or and if it does have a, a I mean, taste. This tasted great. It's sl- there's a slight herbal essence, yeah, but yeah. it's a, a, like really, really pleasing. Yeah. Um, so I think people are going to love that format. Um, and people get the beauty format. And so the body has this receptor network, endocannabinoid system inside the body, but also on the exterior um layers of dermis mm. and so you've these cellular receptor networks so so there's a lot of specific impact around tone improvement around inflammation around redness and um, how people are seeing what these are doing right now so we have a, a product called night magic that we're running consumer clinicals on right now that i'm I, i'm i'm so excited about because i think we're going to be able to make some crazy great claims against you know, ninety-eight percent of people saw this, mm-hmm. or experienced this, or mm-hmm. witnessed this, mm-hmm. because uh, outside of the thirteen organic cold pressed oils we have in there, the meaningful level of cannabinoids on the skin can really be transformative. And I think people, especially in the beauty care category, especially female, but male too, people want to take care of their skin totally. And they and when they see something work like that in in such a fast acting way, people are going to get excited about it. Yeah. You mentioned that one of the big things that Gen Z cares about is the founder and the founder story. And yeah. luckily, you're on the founder hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you going to do, or what are you doing to be more actively out there as the face of Prima? You know, I I have not thought about that as much as I should. And we we've, we've done this great brand video. You can see our faces on 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 the about us section. Right. But outside of doing that, I've been thinking about what are the ways that I can open myself up and, and make myself more available. Right. So currently, the the one of the things that we've done is we started this self care concierge, which is this small group of customer experience folks inside that are rolling calls, rolling live chats, rolling emails, just being porous and available right. to conversation and connection. Um, but we have this ability and this functionality of, of booking 15-minute phone calls with the founders. Okay. So you can go on, book a 15-minute right. phone call, and you can ask us anything. And this is a function that we have up on the website right now. But I, I think people need access in, and they want to hear from you, and they want to know why and what and how. They want to know the intentionality, um, and they and they just really want to know your specific story. Right. And so I, I and, and so the for, platforms yeah. like this. Uh-huh. 
help, but people want the one on one. Hundred percent. And I think just like even being a thought leader, like yeah. as you uncover, because obviously it sounds like you guys are approaching this the right way. You're doing your due diligence. You're doing the research. You're doing all this stuff. Whereas a lot of these other brands, um, or products, I should call them, are just you know just hacking to get, get hacking together whatever their co-packer not yeah. their co-packer but their private labeler person is doing and yeah. just like calling it their own thing and yeah. putting it out there but there's nothing to really back it and you guys are doing that so as you uncover new things just being a thought leader in the space i think is going to be super important and, and that's why we put out the big education platform and yeah. it, it, you said it very well i think there are a lot of products right now and there are no brands with big bees yeah mm-hmm. and that's what we're here to build with, with something with, with level of trust and integrity and i think Customers will really care about that, and that's f- they're they're looking for um, outside of the way in the connection. They're looking for someone who's just going to be available for that level of connection. Right. So, moving on to something that we discussed last time, mm. um, and this is a big change. You mentioned Cory Booker being a friend of yours, and yes. you encouraged him not to run for president. Yes. And here he is. He didn't listen to you. Didn't listen. So to me. what happened? I mean. I'm clearly, my counsel's not working. I need, I need, I need to like ping him and and barrage him on Twitter even more. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, I look. I I think he look. How many candidates on the Dem side right now? I mean, twenty four, twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, ridiculous, right? right? It goes up every day. It's it's absurd. Yeah. Uh, I think. Look, I think he's doing a nice job at running and creating yeah. a platform yeah. and and entrenching himself in the right niches of people. Yeah. I mean, just like Pete Buttigieg is and yep. Gillibrand and Kamala is. Yeah. I mean, they're all doing their job. How it shakes out, I, it, it's going to be really interesting. It is going to be interesting. But I, I think they're looking in four more years. I think they have yep. to have the long game and, approach. Yeah. And, 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 approach. Yeah. and it's going to be, I think it's sadly going to be an unfortunate b- bloodbath when it comes to people just lobbing awful critiques and criticisms at one right. another. And I, I think just... I. I People believe, I believe that people want a level of um, taking the higher road using um, Mama Obama's commentary. Agreed. And I and I think people want the high road again. Right. And uh, and I think I think we deserve that as mm-hmm. as uh, constituents. And I think that um, we dem- will dem- soon start demanding that. And so I th- I think that Cory Booker. He's taking a high road, and he's going to have to raise his voice, right? He's yeah. going to have to get a little dirty and a little loud. Yeah. Um, but he'll do it with a level of class, and I think that we're seeing that. I think that's what it is. Less like direct criticism and just like bashing, more yeah. like solutions. And yeah. this is how we get past this. Everyone knows what situation we're in. Yeah. How do we get past <laughs> right? this? The right. most. But as a father and as a business owner, way. what are the issues that you're going to be looking out for? And you know, now we're 2019, but like leading up to 2020, what are the things that you know, even as citizens of this country, like we should be aware of. Uh, for me, I think one of the big ones that I continually go will go back on and go go towards is how are we educating the next so, generations I'm, of people? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, it's not. Like, well, what are we doing? How are we investing in it? We're not. We're not. Yeah, we're, we're not divesting. Right? We're, 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 we're like, money and we are literally reverting. Like, right. It's, so it's we're, unbelievable. We're, and that's the only. That's the only hope. It's our only hope. But it's it's innovation. It's it's cr- cr- yeah. critical thinking. It's it's movement forward. It's empowerment. How, what? Do, how are we pushing and allowing and platforming them, and giving them the opportunity? We're, we're not. And we're, we're not. like we're loading them with debt. And saying go work in menial jobs as opposed mm-hmm. to let's completely retrans or reconceive how we teach. Yeah, it needs a massive overhaul, not just like oh yeah, let's change this one thing. Hopefully, like, before it's, it's too disaster. late, right? We're and, and so, <laughs> and, and so, I, I think that how the, we, we don't live in the industrial economy anymore, where we have to t- teach people to be workers anymore. We just be, teach people how to think, mm-hmm. how to ch- problem solve. And how to be self-aware humans. Like that's the we're in the purpose economy right now. And the purpose economy is who am I as a human? What do I bring? What values and communication styles and, and abilities do I bring? And 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 that self-awareness is gonna best impact this. Anyone can be taught anything, right? There's technical environments right now, yes, on the certainly on the on digital side, but everything else is is really self-awareness. 
and we have to teach we have to have a massive overall in education that's that's my i'm excited very, to see what happens i mean i've seen kind of little things happening but overall like i mean tuitions are still going up every year it's crazy number of applications are still going up every year so it's not like they're just like demand is low no it's up there it's up um yeah. so they have no other reason to lower tuition or right not they, they, it's not like yeah it's like hey, if you're willing to use your money yeah why not i uh after this, after I build this empire, I'm gonna absolutely get into politics and help you, Jessica A. If you're listening, Ex exactly. Yeah, you know, I think uh, Jessica I, out there, come on. You definitely Let's alluded to it last time. I remember being power talking about the fact yeah. that like there's definitely gonna be a moment that Senator Gavigan's gonna run for senator, <laughs> uh, and hopefully, you know, we're, on, we're we're around to help you. with that I can campaign. only hope. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's 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 something that I've always been seduced by. Yeah, yeah. it's something that it, I'm an impact player, and and sure. I love impacting people and and very intimate times and intimate um, uh, moments of their lives and what they choose to bring into their world. But I, I feel like that is, that's also a big impact play is that could be historically transformative as well. As for parting words, what is your one advice to millennials and Gen Z who are listening to this podcast? And that is our audience to, how, to become involved or to become aware of the social political climate and what can they do to be proactive in society and better themselves and also better their community. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it's having dinner time conversations. It's ha being willing to not see eye to eye with someone that you're sitting across the table with. It's it's being willing to say, I don't know enough about that. I'm going to do some research. It's being willing to do the to do the engagement work that it takes at your community level or asking an elder like we 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 throw away our elders like they're trash right mm -hmm. they know a lot they've seen a lot ask them questions give get gain some insights from them see if you could pl apply that in a modern fresh way I, I i just think we 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 are so insular and so believing that we know it all Look, I'm sitting here as a 45 year old human. Man. Was, yeah, I was just about to say something about that. Right, yeah. like I, 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 I sit here and I have to be curious. I have yeah. to seek. I cannot sit here and say, "Oh, I know it all." I got you have it. to always be a student. Yeah, always. But I feel like that's on like the like even millennials who are like old enough now to it's, have that yeah, power. But totally. you know, um, as well as a generation before. Um, which is like to kind of like lift that veil of like perfection and everything. I know everything and everything is, you know, I've always known everything Yes. to show the younger generation. Like, no, even You're at fallible. this age, you we don't, don't know. Exactly. Like everyone's trying to figure it out. Right. And so that, that level of intimidation, that level of hesitation isn't there anymore for them to go after the big things. Yeah. Like take those big chances and risks because yeah. you can still be 40 and figure it out. Totally. I, I think the, the one of the greatest things that you could do in your life is is to figure out how to overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. Adversity is is here every single day. Mm -hmm. It will always be here through the course of your life. What are you going to do to overcome it? And do you think there's like a and one size fits all? I don't. Or? I don't. I think, and I think there's it's grit, it's perseverance. It's I think also willing Prima to try. will help in the process. Prima can help bring yeah, down yeah. your stress yeah. levels and like yeah. even you out. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to be, you have to be fallible enough and human enough and humble enough to say, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to figure okay with it that. out and be okay with it. Yeah. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be so entitled to sit there and be like, I got it. Bullshit! You don't have it, yeah. and so that whole and, and like listen to it. Sometimes the imposter syndrome is real. Like you don't have it all the time. Like, yes, you've got to believe and you, you feel empowered, mm -hmm. but you also have to be humble enough to say, "I'm going to work for it, and I'm going to put in the work, and I'm going to put in the time, and I'm going to figure it out." And I think that that at the in the workplace that I I cannot tell you how much I celebrate someone says, "You know, I don't have that answer," or because yeah, I could see through bullshit all the time, yeah. right? And and. You have to humbly say, go back and work on it until you're ready to talk about it. And that's okay. You don't have to be 100% ready. I want you to be prepared. And I might be asking you questions you might not have expected, but at least go back and do the work and be efficient enough to come back and be 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 ready to talk about it again. I mean, there's no question the space that you're in is like on, I mean, it's like a gold rush right now and everyone's just kind of, you know, trying to figure this whole thing out. So it's going to be exciting to see everything that happens 
just with Prima and with you moving forward. It's been a, an amazing conversation as always. It's always great to have you on the show. And hopefully next time uh, we sit down with you, it's before you run for yeah, Senate. Exactly. Yes. Well, how about uh, I I I I, I say it right now I'm going to launch my senatorial campaign it. on your. Amazing. I love it. I love so, it. I love so, it. I love so it. so it could be next year. It could be three years. <laughs> That's fine. We're going to we're going to. We'll, we'll so Pat and this. I have decided that regardless of what happens, we're going to still do this podcast. Awesome. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We don't. We don't care. We don't make money, and we want to not make money. We just want to keep having these conversations. And, because we love it. I, and I, I want to commend you guys for giving founders like me the opportunity and platform to just talk and riff. And like yeah. n- again, nothing is prepared. There's no questions right, that they gave me. We are so unprepared. It's it, unbelievable. But it's the best, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great. This is just a combo. <laughs> and like, yeah. let's, let's, Let's yeah. let's talk yeah. about it and let's attack at it and figure it out. Cool. Thanks for hanging us. Thanks for with us today. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Wow.